Dofsia TV here. Today we'll look back at Andrew Nichols' 2011 science, fiction, action picture, In Time, which he wrote, directed, and produced. There will be spoilers ahead. The situation of the globe is described through a voiceover. A place where time has become a valuable commodity. People can now stop aging at the age of 25, but there is a catch, after they reach 25, they are genetically programmed to live only one more year. You can earn more money at work, but you have to trade your time for goods and other services. You die when your time runs out. Will Salas, Justin Timberlake, is a young man from Dayton, a poor slum in the United States Southwest. He takes each day as it comes, earning just enough to get by while enjoying time with his eternally young mother, Rachel Salas, Olivia Wilde. She is 50 years old today, but she works in the garment area for two days and gives Will 30 minutes for lunch. When she returns, they will have a party. On everyone's arms is a glowing green digital clock that is counting down. Will is generous and easily gives Maya, a little beggar girl, five minutes of his time. He gets a coffee on his way to work, and the price has suddenly gone raised. They witness dead bodies in the streets as they walk to work. Will works at a metal stamping plant, where he creates gleaming cassettes. After his shift, he notices that he is being paid less and that his quotas have increased. At a pub, Will runs across his friend Borel, Johnny Galecki. They notice a man offering beverages to everyone and pointing to his arm, which shows he has almost 116 years on it. Will recognizes that the man is not from the slums and is likely to attract attention. The Minutemen, a criminal organization, arrives, armed and ready to compel the man to serve his sentence. Fortis, Alex Pettifer, the gang leader, is 75 years old. Borel and the other patrons of the tavern flee, but Will intervenes and assists the man in escaping. The two evade the Minutemen and eventually take refuge in an ancient building. Henry Hamilton, Matt Bomer, presents himself to Will and explains the time as currency concept. After improvements and anti-aging procedures, it was formed as a measure of population control, yet people were still surviving. Inflation and lower wage levels were intended to keep the population in check. This money system also allowed the wealthy to live far longer than normal, essentially becoming immortal, while the poor died. Henry, on the other hand, is bored of living for so long, and an enraged will informs him that the rich don't deserve their time. He informs Henry that he does not wish to spend his time with him. Will refuses to let the miserable man alone and offers to remain with him until the morning. Henry gives his time to a sleeping will at morning. I'm sure you're enjoying the narrative, so a simple like and subscription would be fantastic. If you haven't done so already. Will awakens alone, with 116 years of time on his hands and a warning not to waste it. Will notices Henry seated on the brink of the bridge via a window and thinks he intends to commit suicide. He rushes out to stop him but just misses him as Henry's time expires and he falls into the storm drain. Will notices that street cameras are recording him and returns home. Will meets Borel and his family and demonstrates his new time to him. Will offers Borel a decade to reward him for being his friend for so long. Borel warns him that staying in Dayton for so long will result in his death. Will wishes to visit New Greenwich with his mother. Rachel uses a Weiss ATM machine to repay a two-day loan. She tries to get a bus home, but the cost has increased to two hours, and she only has 90 minutes left. She had no choice but to flee in a panic. Will, who is waiting for the bus, notices something is awry and rushes up to Rachel. They meet somewhere in the middle, but it's too late, the mother dies in the arms of her son. Will later arranges for a luxurious stretch Lincoln limo to pick him up and transport him to a more prosperous time zone. He enters a glittering modern but sparsely populated city center, New Greenwich, after passing through four toll booths with rising prices. He's all dressed up and ready to eat at a fancy restaurant when a young lady across the room notices him. The waitress advises him to slow down in order to mix in with the wealthy, and proposes a nearby casino. Meanwhile, the timekeepers, a body of authority similar to the police, discover Henry's body. Raymond Leon, Killian Murphy, discovers and analyzes the footage captured by the street cameras. When he expresses surprise after seeing Will's photo, his co-workers inquire if he knew him and if he had a criminal record. Raymond corrects them, saying that while he does not know the current Will Salas, he does know the senior Will Salas. Will Salas is being hunted by by timekeepers. A tuxedo Will meets Philippe Weiss, Vincent Kartheiser, probably the richest man on the planet, at the casino. Will goes all in at a high-stakes poker game and wins, accumulating a winning streak of almost 1,000 years. Philippe, as well as Sylvia, Amanda Seyfried, his gorgeous but sheltered daughter, and the girl from the restaurant, are both impressed. Will accepts Philippe's invitation to his house for another party, and partly to meet Sylvia again. 
he buys a Jaguar E-Type and drives to the Weiss home on the seashore, knowing he needs to be prepared. Philippe reintroduces him to Sylvia, as well as his wife Michelle, Bella Heathcote, and mother-in-law, who all appear to be the same age due to their affluence. The women are constantly followed by guards, but will persuade Sylvia to let loose and have fun. Sylvia agrees after feeling oppressed by her father and his soldiers, and the two go skinny dipping in the ocean. Sylvia admits to wanting she could do something wild and crazy on a regular basis. Philippe, on the other hand, had always restricted his family members, and he soon comes hunting for her. When the timekeepers approach and confront Will, Sylvia and Will manage to dress and make themselves presentable once more. Raymond rewinds the clock 1000 years because they don't trust Will's story. Raymond leaves after implying that he knew Will's father. Will defeats the other timekeepers and kidnaps Sylvia before fleeing the home. Raymond dedicates himself to pursuing them, often risking his life in ways that most timekeepers would not. Will manages to throw Raymond off their trail after a vehicle chase and flees to the countryside with Sylvia, who begs to be released go. The automobile is damaged in a trap set by the Minutemen as soon as they return to Dayton. While Will and Sylvia are still unconscious, the Minutemen learn that Will only has a short time remaining and ends is worthless, however Sylvia has around a decade and thus is worth something. Sylvia panics when the men are forced to flee before they can use all of her time, she has never been given so little time before. Will assures her that she need not be concerned, since ordinary people go about their daily lives. Instead, he takes her to Borel in the hopes of buying them some time. Borel had drunk himself to death with his riches, leaving his wife and newborn alone, much to his dismay. Are you enjoying this story? Could you please help us? We only ask for a simple like on this video. Because it aids the YouTube algorithm in distributing the video to other outstanding YouTube users such as yourself. And if you find us interesting enough, you can subscribe and turn on the notification bell to be notified when we upload new films like this one. Thank you for your support. Let's continue. Will buys them more time by selling Sylvia's diamond earrings, but he knows it won't be enough. He phones Philippe and demands a 1,000-year ransom to be transferred to the Time Welfare Office in exchange for Sylvia's return. Raymond picks up the phone and advises Will against following in his father's footsteps. Will discovers that his father's transgression was something lot more terrible than stealing time. Raymond figures out where Will is hiding and assures Weiss that he will return with his daughter safely. At Will's apartment, he explains that his father was an arm fighter who used a trick to win time trials. He demonstrates that you let the other win at first, until they become overconfident and distracted just as the last few seconds tick away, at which point the arm can be flipped and the flow reversed. When the ransom isn't paid the next day, Will tells Sylvia that it's probably because her father was stopped by the timekeepers, but Sylvia interprets it as proof that her father doesn't care about her. Will, on the other hand, decides to let her go and instructs her to phone her family. He also offers her a gun to protect herself as they are in the ghetto. Raymond appears and nearly shoots an unsuspecting Will as they kiss and split off so Sylvia can make her call. Instead of shooting Raymond, a panicked Sylvia corners him and tries to take his time. Raymond, on the other hand, has very little, as it is standard timekeeper procedure to carry only a small amount of time in order to avoid being targeted. Will gladly transfers four hours of his own time to Raymond before seizing the black Challenger automobile and abandoning him in the slums. Using a police car, Sylvia thinks, was practically begging for attention. They rob another limo and its occupant, a blonde woman dressed as a hooker, in the end. They find out that they've both been put on a wanted poster with a 10-year reward for anyone who can help them get arrested. Philippe examines a gigantic globe map with colored lights and numbers, assuring his business colleagues that his daughter will not destabilize the current economic structure. Raymond, who has been verbally tormented the entire time, manages to flee the ghetto and encounters Philippe. Weiss tries to pay Raymond in rescuing his daughter, but Raymond informs him that Sylvia's actions will result in her being arrested as well. Raymond will have Philippe arrested if he intervenes and tries to save his daughter. Sylvia offers to help Will get time by teaching her how to operate a firearm. Will and Sylvia smash a Weiss bank window with an armored car, scooping up a large number of time cassettes. They invite passersby to grab what they can as well. The unbalance is visible on the enormous status board. This endears them to the majority of ghetto residents. While his wife chastises him for suffocating them, Weiss watches the news coverage of the robbery. In a motel, the two become closer, then realize something is wrong and narrowly avoid Ray and his team. In a running gun duel across rooftops, Ray pursues them alone, refusing to let them go. They are successful in bribing a bus driver and escaping. For solitude, they rent the entire building at a filthy motel. Civilians are rounded up by Fortis and his group until one admits to seeing the two runaways. 
The young couple recount how they went through the transition at age 25 when the green number started counting down in the hotel room. Fortis enters and says that the oppression of ordinary residents is not limited to the wealthy and the timekeepers, the Minutemen are also permitted to do so as long as they do not prey on the wealthy. Will is challenged to an arm fight to the death by Fortis, and as the two men lock arms, Will's time runs out quickly. Will reverses the flow using his technique, then pulls a gun from his boot, kills the henchman, and timeouts Fortis. Will is unhappy and estimates that changing the system will take a million years. Sylvia has an idea where they might be able to discover that time. Sylvia goes home, claiming to give herself in, in order for Will to sneak up on her father and his several guards. They take Weiss to his office under duress and enter a vast vault, where they discover a single one million year cassette. Philippe tries to persuade the two runaways that it is always in one's best interest to live forever, even if it means harming others, but they are unconvinced. The two return to Dayton after locking Philippe in the office. They hand the one million tape to Maya, the little girl, to keep the timekeepers occupied. Raymond follows Will and Sylvia to a rural place on the outskirts of Livingstone, the next town over, just as they're running out of time. Will recognizes Ray as a Dayton native who is simply doing his job, but the timekeeper has forgotten to collect his per diem and dies in front of them as he clocks out. Will notices a police cruiser in the distance and sprints to transfer the timekeeper's per diem from the central console gadget to himself with barely seconds to spare. He returns to Sylvia and just manages to save her life by transferring some time. They only have enough food for a day. The Daytons take a break from their work and march toward New Greenwich. The timekeepers determine that their work are done after seeing the news. Will and Sylvia draw their pistols in front of a massive institution, with a 100-year bounty on their heads, to pull off their largest robbery. Thank you. Thank you for your participation in this community, I hope we were still able to deliver with this story. Let us know what you think of this story. And if you aren't already a part of this family, please subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell to receive videos as soon as they are released and to be eligible to win a variety of prizes from us. Check out the movie that is currently on your screen. It's also a fantastic one. Dopsia Television. Do it, do it, click it. Do it. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Check out the story that's currently on your screen, it's also a good one. If you aren't already a member of the family, you can subscribe to this channel for more fantastic stories like these. Hey! Thank you for your ongoing support, it is greatly appreciated. We'll see you in the next one. Dopsia TV